Hello and welcome to episode 2 of our regular playthrough of the 4.2 update. So this is Alan Paul and I'm glad you've joined this video today. I hope you enjoy the content that I'm going to be producing. So we're starting in with the second episode here. We're going to be picking up right where we left off. We're taking our new ship that we just repaired from our site with all the resources we've gathered into our inventory and we're going to be taking off. Now before I leave... I'm going to move things around in here because I like to have things separated a little bit and give everybody a little room to expand outwards. So in case we get some upgrades for these, we can do that. Starship is the same way. I always like to put my, for now, the um, starting version of our weaponry in one spot. I'll put my shield over here so I can update it. I'll put my pulse engine over here and I'll leave my landing gear right there. So that way I can upgrade it as I go. Alright, and we have enough tritium to charge our pulse engine when we need to. So let's go ahead and get going, shall we? Multi-tools all ready too. Good, everything's in a supercharged slot. Let's go ahead and get out of here. So pay attention, all systems functional. Seek answers among the stars. Use W to take off. Okay, so we're held down the W button. We are now launch thrusters 25% and we're now flying. Now it looks like there's something to our left. I'm assuming that's another ship that's flying past, but I'm going to take a look. Yep, there they are. See that? So that's what it's picking up on that radar. More ships flying. Now right now we are in... Hey, look, they do have flying creatures on this planet. We are in what's called first person view. If you go to your settings, again, just like we did with our main character, we can switch our starship view. Now, I like to put it on a hotkey so I can switch back and forth. Okay, so if I hit 1, I go into a third-person view, and I prefer this view so I can see what's around me. So I'm going to stick to this view for now. All systems functional, seek answers among the stars. So, what does that mean? I guess we have to go out into space now, don't we? We are on a spaceship. Let's give it a shot. Now, we haven't discovered all the creatures here, but I have a funny feeling we're going to be coming back to this planet. So I'm going to go into space. If I hold the W down, it's just going to give me regular thrusters. If I hold my left shift down, it'll give me a super thrust. The Vulentem system, Euclid Galaxy, and it looks like I am the first person to have been in this particular system in the galaxy. So there's a new thing, right? So orbital flight has been achieved. Stair, test starship systems. Test flight controls and thrust. So flight controls are just moving your mouse around and going left and right and discovering things. And let's go to first person view for now. So you notice on the left, it's going 122 units a second. We're gonna speed up. We're doing about 365. So that's the first thing we've tested. Now we're gonna use the boosters. That'll boost us up to about 2678 okay we'll pull back a little bit and then it wants us to test the pulse engines but before we do you notice we come across an asteroid belt this is very handy remember that tritium I was mentioning at the beginning guess what we can get while we're here we can get some tritium from these rocks but there's other things here too let's get all the rocks and watch we got silver we got gold. Gather up as much as you can for now. You notice another ship appears, and it's a helper. As it gathers resources as well, it will give them to you, see? If I let him do that, watch. Watch what happens. So they're doing the same thing. They're harvesting things from the uh, asteroid belt. We're not getting it, but they are. But they're just trying to show us what needs to be done. Now, we don't have a mining laser, but we do need that tritium. So I'm going to keep going. Ooh, we'll get a tritium hypercluster. That's very handy. We'll go for a little bit here. Now, we can also use, instead of using our uh, lasers our photon cannons, we can also use which are two weapons of rocket launchers. See? And it will give us stuff too. So you can do that on occasion as well if you wish. Alright, let's see how much we got. 
All right, so we got these four of these. If we hit the E button and analyze them, it'll give us more of that. I recommend hanging on to a couple because you might need them later. And these are sellable or usable. I would like a little bit more gold if I can get my hands on some. Because we could use it later. And occasionally you run across bigger rocks that you can get stuff from. Lots of silver, not running into as much gold as I used to be able to. Alright. Now, your pulse engines, just so you know, will avoid these systems. They can fly right through... The shields will bend the asteroid belts around your ship, if you will. And protect you. But only in that mode. Otherwise, if I run into something... Ooh, I got a gold nugget out of that. That's good. So, in other words, if I run into one of these rocks... It'll damage my shields, but I will get the materials out of it as well. So let's take a look and see what I got. This gold nugget, see I got 30 gold, watch what happens. Now I got 110 gold, so it's good to get one of those. Alright, so we need to check the pulse engines, right? Pulse engines, it says to hold the space button down until it charges up, and then... And you can release it right away. Oh, another asteroid field. Okay, we'll get out of that. And a couple storms in the, in the, in the sky, too. Oh, we're getting an incoming message. Hit the X, select the message. Incoming transmission. Source 4925B. Notice the B on there. Please identify yourself. I'm... I have no idea. Identify ourselves. You are not alone. Follow the... The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. We input the data. So now it's going to lead us someplace. Okay, so where is it taking us? Oop, follow the red icon. Right there. Signal source. So if we aim at it, get it right in the middle if you can. Hold down your space button, you'll lock in on it. And it will take the curve of the planet and everything into consideration. Okay, so now we're beginning suborbital flight. Coming into the planet's surface. Alright, back to third person view so you can see what's going on. Now each of these episodes I'm going to try to keep to 30 minutes. Like I said, it's not surprising we're back at the planet again, right? So we're about 12 seconds away. Now it's approximate location. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. We can use our scanner to find it, or we can scan with our ship with the same button. If you find something that looks like a, a building, it's probably where you're going to, but it may be heading us towards a ship, and we won't see it on this particular scanning. But if we look here, we might see it on the radar at the bottom. But right now, we're going to go ahead and land at this building, because maybe it'll have a landing pad. No, it doesn't. But let's go ahead and land anyway. Now remember, my launch thrusters are 25%. So sooner or later, we're going to have to make something to launch with. While we're here, let's go ahead and gather up this. We could use it. This gives us a save point. It gives us 10 nanites and navigation data. Restore point saved. There's our navigation data. And there's our 10 nanites. Now, the nanites go into a pool of secondary units that we could use. And we're looking at our ship inventory. And there is our navigation data that I picked up. So that's very handy. Gather them up like you would as if it was money. Okay, so if we hold down the F, we don't know if we're in the right place or not. It normally would be in a scanning mode, but it says signal source is located, so we actually landed at the right place. So let's go ahead over here. Now if I look through here, I'm going to check again, because remember we saw some flying creatures? I'm going to see if there's any here we haven't discovered. Uh... Don't see them yet. They may pop up in a little bit. So let's go ahead and check out this peach of what looks like broken technology. The sparkling 
wires of the machine generate a signal tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left the message is long gone. Decipher the signal. Decoding. Entry 4925C. See, it's following a pattern now. No fuel in. Failed to reach station. Hazard protection low. No choice but to underground. Deployed base computer. So we're going to get some new tools here. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. So let's extract those plans. There's our base computer. There's our terrain manipulator. Okay. So we need both of those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the terrain manipulator. That's going to be installed over here. So you see it's already giving us a spot. So I'm going to put it over here on the right. It requires a dihydrogen jelly and two carbon nanotubes. And you'll remember how to build those. So let's just go over here and make them. The hydrogen jelly, one, two carbon nanotubes. Okay. Back to the multi-tool. We can now finish building it. And if we exit, what does this do? Well, we can't harvest the items that are here, right? But it can dig holes and give us silicate powder by doing so. It will also destroy anything that happens to be around it. So if we... See? It's gone and we don't get the resources from it. So be careful, but at the same time it's very handy to get rid of those pesky uh, plants that might be attacking you as well by digging underneath them and destroying them. Now this particular area is in a nice spot. It's got a nice cave over here we can hang out in. Ah, and there's our first sentinel. Now watch what happens when I try to gather something. Okay, mining beam. Watch. See? So be careful. He'll just scan you and make sure you're not a threat. So as long as you put your tool away and don't do anything more, he'll ignore you. Starting planet, that's the way it works. So I'm going to head for the cave here. Because, for obvious reasons. There you go. And then we'll take a look around. So is there anything we haven't discovered yet? Looks like we got some flying creatures finally up in the sky, so let's exit the cave and go check them out. There it is. And if you hit your visor, you can actually zoom in with the right mouse button. Two levels of zooming, and it kicks back out. So we have six of seven creatures. Boy, I wonder where that seventh creature is, right? Well, if you're wondering and you keep looking around and can't find it, if you go to your escape menu and go to your discoveries, it'll show you that you've discovered six of seven animals. And there we go. And the last one appears to be an underground animal that happens to be rare. So that's where our seventh animal is. But you see it, notice, it gives you 1,750 nanites if you can discover all well, seven of them. So very, very handy to do so. Early game hint. So since we happen to be by a cave, keep your eyes peeled. Because if you see an animal scurrying around in there, that might be what you're looking for. It's not going to be these guys but it will be an actual animal that's crawling around inside the caves. Okay, so we need copper, it says. We're going to go ahead and gather that. How do we find copper? Well, we did so earlier by looking at that. There you go. Looks like we have copper right there. Now, there's also something on this planet called salvage containers, and I'll show you a little something about those too. We happen to be fortunate to be on a planet that has them. So I'm going to go up here. This is, by the way, sodium nitrate, but you notice it needs an advanced mining laser to gather any of these, so you can ignore it for now. Let's go over here to our copper deposit. Now, if you want to, remember those blue flowers, the deuterium? They give you a jetpack boost, so if you really want to get someplace fast, it gives you unlimited resources for your jetpack for a, a, for a small amount of time. See? And then you can just go. And go, and go, and go. But listen. Fading. Now you're on your regular jetpack. So this is copper. So you remember that, that uh, terrain manipulator we were talking about? So that's the standard version. Using your R and T buttons, you can adjust the size. By doing R, it makes it much smaller. T, larger. And finally, super large. Great for digging a tunnel. See? Great if you want to tunnel out of something real fast and get someplace in a harsh environment. 
it also can protect you. So if I do that, watch this. And I go in here, watch the arrow. It just says stabilizing. Now it can't increase your hazard protection, but it at least stops it from going down. So it's very handy to just get out of an element if it's been a, a really bad storm or something like that. Now if I do this on this particular deposit at the largest setting, I'll get eight copper out of that from that big chunk I just took out of it. Now if I go one size smaller, I get four copper. See? Five. But if I go really small, that same amount of spot that I was in, look how much copper I'm getting. You'll gather more copper from these deposits if you go to the smallest size. And you will need this. You will always need copper. Always. So, let's gather this up. We're about halfway through this episode, so we'll do another 15 minutes and we'll get as far as building a base. Now, there's two things you can do in regards to base building. You can just build it right where you're at, if you wish. Up to you, especially if you get some good resources around. But you'll notice this tends to be a hot planet. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. But, you know, it is. It's hot. It's got storms. Um, I don't know if I want to build here or not. So what I may do is I may go out in space, use my last launch thrust to go out into space to search the planets that are out there. We don't have to go to the planets. We just got to be able to see them from here while we're in space. And then we'll be able to discover whether these planets are good planets to form a base on. Now, if we're fortunate in this system, there may be more than the... The, the smallest system I've ever been in had two... Uh, two planets in it. And I've been in planetary systems that had as many as seven planets with multiple moons. So, we'll see what kind of system we're in. We're usually in a very basic system that has at least three or four planets to it. Three, three or four different worlds you can get. Oh, well, this is a very good deposit, actually. So, you notice that my manipulator, drain manipulator, is going down. What we're going to charge it with is the other resource we're gathering from here, the silicate powder. So, we'll be using that to charge it. As soon as it gets low enough. But we're going to go ahead and gather up as much of this copper as we can. We don't have to look for more deposits. One deposit ought to do for us now. It's kind of boring work, and yes, it is a grind at this point. Most of the missions that you're going to do are going to be a grind. But they also teach you about the game and how you can gather resources. Here, we're going to run out. There we go. With the X, recharge, select it. We can use ferrite dust, or we can use silicate powder. Use the silicate powder. It's a much cheaper resource, and you can get it anywhere. Ferrite dust you have to mine, so it requires a lot more to get one of those to get that particular resource, so it's not really worth it. All right, yeah, this, like I said, this is a really good deposit. I'm gonna gather up as much as we can. It takes a couple minutes. If you've watched any of my expedition videos, you'll notice that I like to do it this way better. I know there are some out there, like Jason Plays, who likes to use the medium and blast through a deposit as quickly as possible and move on to the next one. And that can be worth it as well. But if you're using your jetpack and your feet to run across a landscape, sometimes it's not always the best way to go. We will get a lot from this particular resource here, probably in the order of close to a thousand. If Jason used the medium mode, he'd only get maybe five to six hundred out of it. In large mode, we'd be lucky to get three or four hundred out of it. You notice my hazard protection still dropping. It's okay, I'm watching it. We will finish this up long before our hazard protection gets low enough to cause us a problem. Almost done. Almost done. Okay, we're at 25%. That's okay. What we'll do is we'll make another battery and then we'll recharge it. I want to keep the sodium because the sodium can come in handy later on. Wow, we are going through a second charge of this, probably. More ships flying overhead. We're not going to look at them. We're going to finish up this deposit. I want to get it done quickly. Wow. Very rich deposit. Oh, a little chunk right there in midair. Looks familiar, like. And we'll get it from this side, and then we'll, we'll call it. Now, notice my screen is getting kind of reddish-looking. 
like it's been... Oh, and depleted. Go figure. Let's go ahead and recharge. There we go. And our ship is there. So let's make one of those batteries real quick. Remember, we're going to make it with that. And we'll drop it in there now. There you go. So now we're safe. Now we do need other resources. So might as well gather up the crystals while you can. Just keep an eye open for those sentinels. If they see you doing it, they're going to check you out. And they might get mad at you. But we do need dihydrogen as much as we can get that as well. Um, there we go. Oh, we got a crystal fragment out of it. And that will give us more. So we're at 115. 150. So that's handy. Gather up resources as you go. All right. So we have what we need. I, I would grab the plant, but we're literally right by our ship. So there's no reason, you know, rushing at this point. Uh, let's look at the visor and just see if... Oh, it looks like there's a unknown building in the distance. We could probably check that out if we wish. Any animals in the caves here? Always take a peek. Because the animals are populating as you're standing here. And we kind of need to know if there are any. Now that guy looks like he was an animal from inside the cave, but it looks like we've already discovered that one. So hopefully we'll discover another one here soon. Oh. Is that? I thought I saw... There is one, right here. Let's see if we can gather that. Yep. Alright. Excellent. Take another look. I want to see if we have any animals, because those animals are very handy. Um, remember that salvage container we were talking about? Let's check it out. Again, if you're fortunate to start on a planet that has special resources, like bones or salvage containers, go ahead and get them. The thing that's going to happen here, though, is once we salvage it, we may get attacked by corrupted sentinels. So we have to be careful. Okay, so you see there's something sticking out of the ground here, too, right? So first thing we need to do is clear the ground. Excuse me. Okay. We'll go with the largest setting. And you notice we've got a nice big piece of machinery here. All right. And my suggestion is you make a hole towards the back. Now, these sentinels will attack. The only weapon we have right now is our mining beam, which we are going to use to take some of the protective casing off of these. Watch what happens. See? Take the protective casings off. Oh, that one right there. And then we get the final piece. And it looks like we have them right in front of us. Hi, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and gather it. He's going to shoot us. It's okay. Ooh, this is a very expensive item. All right, let's get out of here. I'd, I'd fight him, but I don't have a weapon to fight him with, really. We can use our mining laser if we wish. Oh, there's three of them. Fight because of the value. See, we can use the, the, this to, to fight him with, but sooner or later... Wow, it's taking way too long to take that guy out. And I don't even know if I'm hitting him at this point. Let's go ahead and head for our ship. We're getting damaged too much. So the further away we go, the better off. Now, I don't recommend getting in your ship. It will not protect you. Go for a cave, if you can find one, and hide. There we go. And they should stop following you. So if you look in your visor, you can usually see them someplace. That's just a regular sentinel. Hmm, I don't see them anymore. Okay. Well, that's good. So we found ourselves a cave. Um, let's look for the animals, too, while we're here. So without weapons, it's very hard to take out those corrupted sentinels these days. Because they've gotten tougher. <laughs> I do not see any animals in here. I have some humming sacks. 
and an incredible desire to want to harvest them. I'm going to get rid of the hazardous floor that's in my way because I don't feel like getting creamed by them. And the third one. That should do it. Okay. All right. So we got our salvage data. Now, what is that involve? Look what this is worth. 2.2 million, two and a quarter million credits just for that one item alone. Makes this laughable at this point. And we got, look at that, over a thousand copper. All right, so we'll need that later. We're going to make that copper into something, so uh, we'll worry about that just later. Now, those uh, humming sacks, just to show you what these are. Inside are something called an albumin pearl. By all means, pick them up. They are worth a little bit. And again, for early game, if you don't have a planet with specialty stuff, 42,000 for the four of them. Obviously, uh, at 10,000 each, this is worth 100,000, a little over 100,000 per stack. So, something good to sell along the way. Okay, good deal. So we got enough carbon, uh, pardon me, enough uh, cobalt to get by for the time being. Our sentinels did not follow us, so we're going to head back out. There's no icons at the top right indicating we're in trouble or anything like that. All right, good. So our next thing to do is to build a base, but we're not going to do that. Remember I said we're going to go out and look for a better planet? So let's take these few ex last minutes of this episode to take a look. Notice my launch thruster is at zero. Now something I always do or like to do is I like to look for planets. Now if you go look at your radar at the bottom, planets are going to show up as the balls that they are. It looks like there's two over here, back to back. But we can't really quite see them because we're in the way of the planetary pull of this. So we'll get out of the way, and it should show up. There we go. Unknown planet is the back one. Let's take a look and see what it is by scanning it. It's a lifeless planet. Not really worth it. But we won't find too much there that's going to attack us, so that's good. Let's check out this one. Shell-strewn planet, also kind of lifeless. There may be animals on it, but it may not be very nice. Uh, what's this blue ball here? Boiling Doom. So don't let the color fool you, right? Now it looks like, if I'm looking at this, yeah, there's another one over here. We can barely see it. And there's one behind this, like a moon or something like that. So let's get around the planet, shall we? So we can expose it. And the planet we're on has rings on it, too. Isn't that cool? Alright, that should be good. Let's take a look at this one. Paradise planet. So that's what we're looking for. Paradises are good. I want to check out the moon while it's here. Should be right there. Ah, I can't see it. We'll head towards the paradise planet, and then we'll check out that moon. And trust me, it's a moon, not a space station. Okay. So it's pretty far out there. But what better planet to build on than a paradise planet, honestly. And you can just barely see it. Now, it looks blue to me, and I'm guessing it's a cold one. Unknown moon. Sub-Zero. Also has salvageable scrap on it, though, so that's good. And we got dioxide, which is something we would like to get sooner or later. So that's good. We have discovered all the planets in the system. Let's head to our paradise planet. Now, notice my pulse engine's at 38% right now. So we need to recharge that. Uh, there it is, pulse engine, and we can use 106 of the tritium to get us up to 100%. Now remember, we don't have any juice in the old launch thrusters, so once we get here, we're going to look for, hopefully, a what's called a minor settlement, which will have a landing pad, and we can use that temporarily. Now, why am I going all the way out here? Because I'm going to be establishing a base, and it will have its own teleporter and everything like that at some point. So we can go back and forth to the space station that's in this system. So we're really rapidly coming up on the 30-minute mark. Hopefully I can find that space, that uh, minor settlement quickly. But uh, what I'm going to do is, while we're headed here, as we come across the planet, and I'm going to go to the sunny side of the planet, mind you. There we go. Ooh, it looks like there's water on the planet, too. That's good. We'll go to the sunny side of the planet, facing upwards. And we'll check it out. 
first we're going to take a quick dive into it, and if I don't find something right away, we'll pause this video and we'll pick it up in a couple moments. Let's go to third person view. Okay, so obviously red planet, but we got some nice plants, nice trees, copper deposits, kind of nice looking. Let's do a quick scan. I'm not finding anything just yet. And you notice that we can head in different directions and stuff. So we're looking for an icon that looks like a house, like that. Let's see what this is. It is... Hmm. Well, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> That's not a building I'm looking for. It's good. Why don't we go ahead and land? We'll check it out. I don't see any sentinels here, so this is not one of the sentinel buildings. Once it turns green, if you hit that, it will land there. That's now a landing pad, and you will not need to use your thrusters to get up from here. So let me show you this. If you look at it, if you see anything that has like a, what looks like an antenna array on top, check it out. Okay. So this is a transmission tower. My guess is this is one that is for deep space, I think. Automated distress call went unanswered. If I can crack the encryption pattern, I could potentially extract the coordinates. 12624120. So basically, it's a mathematical equation. 1 plus 1 is 2. And it's actually, it's multiplication, pardon me. So you go to the two numbers at the beginning. So 1 times 2 gives you 2. 2 times 3 gives you 6. 6 times 4 gives you 24. 24 times 5 gives you 120. So 120 times 6 is obviously the next thing, which is always going to be 720. If you get it wrong, you can't come back to it. So it says distress, distress signal coordinates discovered. So it's going to show us where this is. What this distress signal could point to is either a crashed freighter or a crashed ship. So we may be in line to get ourselves a brand new ship. Looks like a regular ship at this point. Yep, four hours away. So that could be worth our time, and I'll go ahead and show it to you this video. Like I said, I like to keep them at a half hour, but <laughs> why not, right? So now, like I said, let's always gather our navigation data. There we go. Our ten extra nanites. And remember, we have nothing in our launch thrusters, but we can still take off because we're on a landing pad. So let's check out this ship, but we're going to look for something in the meantime. So I'm going to show you something real quick. You'll notice it is at 10 minutes away. We could fly straight with our thrusters and get there at 7.5. Or we can go into space. Okay. Point down at it and aim for it just like you would anything else and hit your pulse engine. And you'll pulse there. And remember, I got nothing in my launch thrusters. Can I make launch thruster juice? Let's find out. We can, but we require a metal plate. So why don't we do that? And we'll make launch thruster juice. And I'll go ahead and put one in here so that way we can get, get around the planet a little bit. Let's see what kind of ship it left us. Now remember, we're in a smaller C-class ship. The ship we're going to get is going to be damaged in multiple ways. Did we get lucky and get ourselves a... Nah. It looks like a freighter. I think. Let's take a quick peek at it. It is a hauler, yes. Worth 12 million. It's also a C-class, so it has plenty of room inside. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to repair this and we can probably sell it later on. We'll use it, but we'll sell it later on, and we'll keep our original ship as well. So let's go ahead and repair it real quick. So what do we have? What's our time at? 34 minutes? Let's go ahead and do this real fast. Whatever we build has to be in our exosuit, first of all. And you already know you're going to need... We'll need something. Let's go ahead and check out the damaged machinery. As it pulls back, we get our nanites from it. Let's gather up materials. I'm not going to check out the big guy right now. And I don't need any ferrite dust. So I'm going to get rid of the rusted metal. Okay, we got some ammunition that we don't use. <laughs> and a Corvax casing that's worth something. 
what we're looking for is this round ball here. It'll tell us a little story. I clamber into the cargo ship and find its black box. As soon as it touch it, a holographic image of a panicked reptilian trader appears. Perhaps it's a message for their superior, perhaps a loved one. It's impossible to tell, as the playback is hauntingly silent. In its final moments, the trader seems to point at some freshly installed ship tech before dropping to its knees in despair. So now we can ins inspect that recently installed ship tech or we can search for cargo. I'm going to go ahead and inspect for ship tech. I discover the poorly installed tech that caused the track crash. I scan its blueprint and can now construct it myself. We get a teleport receiver. So we now have that recipe added to our list of stuff that we can put into our ships. So that's good to have. Anyway, so that's the end of that. Um, let me go ahead and gather up the... Um, there it is, technology module. There we go. We want to get those while we can. Again, we just got two of them. And now we can claim the ship. So let's take a look at it. The voice of inevitability. That's pretty good. You yeah, notice there's a lot of damage in this thing. And it requires a lot of resources to fix all the damage in it. So is it worth to have it later on in game? Yes, it would be. But right now, the value of it at 12 million is not going to be anywhere near that. You'd probably get about three. But still, three million is better than nothing. So if you can fix just the pulse engine and the launch thruster, you can get this ship up and running. So we know we need, oh, we gotta compare it first, and then we have to claim it. Okay, so we're not swapping it, we're claiming it. Okay, so now that we have this ship here, we're gonna make our metal plate, we're gonna make our dihydrogen jelly, and we need a hermetic seal, which we can't make, we need condensed carbon. So let's go up here and at least repair this and repair this. So we need condensed carbon. Put that down right there. We're gonna put a little bit of carbon in here. I'm not gonna use a whole lot because we don't need a whole lot. And then we're gonna take some of the carbon. It's a two to one ratio. It takes, I think, 30. Let me just see, I don't know if it's 20 or 30. Let's check. Uh, requires a little bit more than that. Uh, 30. Okay. So we need 9 more. So that means 18 carbon. 16. We can add more. We need 2. Oh, you dog, you. There you go. 18. That's our 9 more condensed carbon. And we also need 50 ferrite, right? Pure ferrite. I did it again. And you see, you can lower your count down if you want. So you just get what's needed. And this will get our ship repaired. Okay. And that's it. Let's pick it up. Let's go back to our ship inventory. And now we can fix the last two spots. Oh, we still have to build that. Let's go ahead and put this in. We'll make our hermetic seal. And we'll fix this. Now we could fix the shield and everything like that, but there's no reason to fix any of this. If it had some installed tech that was operational, we could uninstall it and get the uh, items out of it. But it's now it's repaired enough, you'll notice it's not flaming and on fire, so now we could take it up to the space station and sell it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me recharge my life support real quick. And we don't need to do much here. We will come back to this planet afterwards and I will check it all out and we'll show you that here in just a couple of moments. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll be right back as I approach the space station. So we're on an approach to the space station, but you'll notice it doesn't show up in our radar at the top of the screen. It shows up as an icon on your map down at the bottom. It looks like a little diamond. So that's how you get to your space station at the very early game. And you're going to get special music when you approach it. You're not supposed to be getting to your space station this early on. But if you happen to be fortunate enough like me to get your hands on a crashed ship, you want to get to the space station as quickly as possible and sell it. Because without the shields in order, you're a sitting duck for pirates. And there's the special music that comes up whenever you find your first space station. It's like a really huge achievement in the game. But now you know how to get there. So I'll show you what happens. Check your inventory on your person to make sure there's enough slots available, which we happen to have. I don't need this. And while we're here, we can sell some items. 
So I'm going to go over here and sell some items first just to get my inventory cleared out. I made it. <laughs> Early game jetpacks. So this is a Galacta Trade Terminal where we're going to sell the Alpimin Pearls. We're not going to sell we're not going to sell this even though it's worth a lot. But we will sell that processor. We're getting a little bit less for it, 4.3%, but still 2 million's nice. Let's get rid of the chlorine, we don't need it. And the Corvax casing. Okay. So we got 2. Point, almost 2 2.3 million in there. We can buy stuff that we're here too. You can buy some if you look at the top, you can get some ferrite dust, some cobalt if you wish. You can get some of those dihydrogen jellies. So I recommend getting a few of those. Get like about, I don't know, about 15. They're not really very expensive. Uh, don't get any of these. You don't really need them yet. Wiring looms are expensive, and you probably don't need any yet. But if you have the cash like I do, I'm going to grab a few. I'm going to get like five of them because I have the money to do it. And then... Pyrite is excellent commodity. It is used for charging your thrusters, pardon me, your uh, pulse drive. So it's a very good idea to get as much as you can. If it's 467, it is really, really worth it because it's more efficient to use this than tritium. Ammonia for certain planets, you got silver and you got paraffinium. Ammonium is used to charge certain shields, but we don't need that right now. So we've got some stuff. Um, we're going to keep it on our person for now. And this will go ahead and um, we're going to put it into our portable refiner and we'll get more dihydrogen out of it. But you can leave it in its current form if we need to. Okay. And there's plenty of people here. You can start talking to them and get to learn some of their languages and, and roles and stuff like that. But we'll teach you more about the space station later. Ooh. Look at you. Solar ship at 4.4 million. See, now is a good time to think about buying or upgrading your current ship. If you can get lucky enough like I did. So let's sell this. So you see, claim scrap worth, see it's not even worth 3 million. But still, it's 2.78 million that you didn't have. So we're gonna claim the scrap. Claim it. And it is now gone. Now you're gonna get stuff out of here. Let's check our inventory. You're gonna get sometimes upgrades, which you can use if you wish. The C-Class upgrades I tend to get rid of, but we got fortunate enough to get a storage augmentation, which can increase the size of the ship that we're in. We also got some items that we should sell, because that's will give us the money. See, notice the money didn't just appear. It came to us in the form of these items, which we have to sell off. So let's go here first, the exosuit upgrade, and we're gonna upgrade our exosuit and get an extra slot. The first one is always free, so you can put it anywhere you wish. Now, since I don't really have a lot of technology going on, but I really could use the car, the cargo. I'm going to stick it over here right in the middle because I hate empty spaces in the center. And you can't get another upgrade right now. And once you've exhausted the one that's in there, you can't get any more. So while they sell upgrade modules, you, see, you don't see uh, anything that says you can sell back. If you select purchase but then select sell, you can sell any that you have on you. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. It's not going to give us much of a boost anyway but it will give us a few extra nanites. Okay, and you can get other upgrades from many of these guys that you find along the way, if you wish, including an, a different multi-tool if you wish to buy one. Again, we'll cover that at another time. Whoops, wrong way. So now that we sold this ship, you see our main ship has reappeared. Okay, and it gave us a, the achievement of making all that money. So let's put the pyrite in our starship because that's where it needs to be. And we need to sell off. We're going to go ahead and put this in our starship too. We'll hang on to it for now. I'm not going to upgrade this ship. But we need to sell these three. Best people to sell it to are these people right here. Now, we won't understand a thing he's saying, but that's okay. Offer to trade. Again, we're going to sell. And we're going to get rid of the items we just record, that we acquired in doing the ship. You notice we'll get the money back out of these. See? Make sure you be careful what you click on. You don't want to sell something you meant to keep. And if you want to, you can check his wares and see what he has. Because sometimes they're selling stuff that you really could use. I don't see anything in here really that's worthwhile. So, goodbye, prospector. And if you want to, check with other guys that have landed and see what they've got. If you can get some uranium, that's very, very handy for your launch thrusters. 
Okay, so that takes care of that, and we have the money now to be able to purchase a new ship if we wish to. But we're going to hold off because, well, that ship is gone that we were looking at. But we're going to go ahead and head back to our main planet now. So I'm going to go ahead and take off, and we'll see you there in just a moment. And we're back. So what I found here is a minor settlement. Now, one of the benefits behind this, like I said, is A, it has a landing pad. So you don't have to use your launch thrusters as often. So we're going to go ahead and land on that landing pad. The benefit behind a paradise planet as well is that there are no storms. And usually the, the fauna, the, the animals on the planet, are usually friendly as well. Occasionally you run across one that has, that has nasty animals on it that will attack. So you have to be careful. So minor settlement. Okay. We're in a good spot. It looks like it has some caves nearby so we can get some extra resources. Um, another good thing about having this here is that you have uh, extra gear here and these things. Occasionally. <laughs> Hello there, sir. Good old Gex. And you also have access to an interior building where you can gather and buy certain things. Occasionally they'll have this multi-tool. Now if I reload and re if I save and reload, I might get a different tool here. So that's something to keep in mind. But whatever tool I get is the only one that's going to be there after that. We got some credits. That's nice. Here's your trade terminal, so you can trade stuff out. Now, mind you, these trade terminals on the planets don't have a lot of resources. You notice 41, 68. They don't have a lot. Ferrite dust. This is a actually a pretty good planet if it has this many. Oh, we have uranium. I told you to get that if you could. It's expensive, but get it. That'll take the place of your Starship launch fuel, and you'll never have to make more launch fuel again. So let's go ahead and take that and put it in my Starship. Get rid of that for now. Okay, and you have other things. Some of the plants in here will give you carbon just by selecting them. Uh, the encrypted navigation data will give you nanites and sometimes give you a navigation data. There's also another one that looks like this. See? And there you go. And you can buy units from here. You can buy the stuff that's in that trade terminal. You can go to this guy behind the counter, and he has technology data he'll sell you. He'll either sell you purchase components, which are hermetic seals. You've got a couple of those. Matter housing, microprocessor. See, here's some wiring looms. You can get them all from here. Nice. He's got a lot of stuff, including, it looks like a few exosuit upgrade charts. So you can get these, and it'll show you drop pods where you can upgrade your exosuit, including extra navigation data. And every time you reload and re or, or save and reload, and come back this will all be repopulated again and sometimes over time it'll just repopulate so that's great plus you can sell some of the stuff that you have in your inventory if you wish the second thing he also sells if we go back in is components blueprints pardon me which give you basic blueprints some of them require rankings in the in their particular species to get it but i can get my advanced mining laser right now if i wanted to I'm not going to because it's part of the storyline we will get that later on including an upgrade for our um Bowcaster, our shields, and for viewing things in our viewer. But, and other things too. You remember we already got the teleport receiver, so we don't have to worry about that. It's already known. Personal force field and oxygen recycler we can put into our person. So we can get some nice things from this guy as well. He becomes a resource for us. So if we build a base here, we're in a really good spot. Plus a paradise planet. Now we will get a storm the first time we actually build something. I always like to build my uh, base right outside the door. So I'm going to take this base computer. We need to refine some metal, and we're going to finish this up. I know this episode has run really off here. We're going to go ahead and put copper in here, and we're going to load this thing full. We need, I believe, 30 chromatic metal for the first time around. But we'll, we'll let it run. There we go. And now we can create our base computer. Turn it a little bit so it faces us. And when it opens, it'll face us now. There we go. Neptune Colony. Searching cartographic record archives, pardon me. Universal Archive Search reveals no prior claims on the site. Sonar test confirmed site is suitable for construction. Claim site. We claim the base. We get a pullback. And you'll notice we're in a nice little area. There's actually an ocean pretty close by. It's not too far away. And we have created our first base. 
Now, we'll go to creating the base and actually laying out parts and stuff like that later on, but we're not going to do that just yet. So I'm going to hold off on this for now. We're going to end this episode here. Get a nice little screenshot right here. Which you could do. And... There we go. Get the ship in the background. And pull up just a touch. There we go. So we can see our person a little bit more. Base computer. There we go. And there's our first screenshot for our first episodes. Excellent. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, by all means, put them in the comments section. I'd love to respond to people. Thank you very much. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode.